I've been an environmental economist for roughly 20 years now. I received my PhD from the University of Chicago in 1993, and I hope that uh, these lectures will be useful to you in thinking about why this is an exciting and important field. I've greatly enjoyed working on it, and I plan to continue to do so. So there's many big questions in environmental economics today. Uh, perhaps one of the biggest, especially when you think about India and China and other developing nations, as economic growth takes place, which environmental problems grow worse? You can look at urban air pollution, greenhouse gas emissions, but uh, flipping things around and for the optimists out there, which environmental challenges actually vanish? Thinking about indoor air pollution, urban water pollution and infectious disease, as nations get richer, they solve those problems. Why? As economists, we always focus on incentives. How can we harness incentives to improve environmental performance judged at the city, nation, or global level? Whether the issue is local air pollution or greenhouse gas emissions, how can we use incentives to address these challenges? And if it's so obvious to economists, why haven't the politicians adopted our smart ideas? That's the field of environmental political economy. There's a whole other side to environmental economics on the demand side. How much are we willing to pay for environmental quality? Little things, like blue skies. Bigger things, such as uh, avoiding an oil spill in, 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 such, in the Gulf of Mexico. For such non-market goods, how much are we willing to pay to protect the environment? And how does this differ over time and across nations? Many interesting questions. Crucial for determining the benefits of environmental regulation. Here's an ugly day in Beijing. Unfortunately, it's a little too typical. Why, in a city filled with uh, hundreds of thousands of sophisticated people who know that this pollution is nasty and bad for their health, where do such dirty days come from? And if it's obvious to the people who live there that they're suffering, why does this problem persist and will it persist? This is the job of the environmental economists to make progress on this. We know that China today suffers from terrible air quality and, and from water quality, water pollution issues in many of its cities. This is a byproduct of its tremendous economic growth. But it's no law of physics that economic growth has to degrade the environment. Today, China faces many challenges, but I'm actually highly optimistic that it will soon enjoy great environmental progress. Take a look at this. We know that uh, climate change is uh, one of the crucial issues we face uh, for our, our children's generation and our grandchildren. Look at the challenge we face here. Here I take World Bank World Development Indicators data from 1960 to the present and I graph three different lines. The bottom line is India's annual per capita carbon dioxide emissions. Notice in 1960 when India was very poor, take a look at the, the squares, a, in, a a benefit to the world of a poor nation is very low greenhouse gas emissions. See the linear trend as China grows richer over time. The next line up is China. And notice the divergence in per capita green, uh, carbon dioxide emissions between India and China. Notice that over the time period 1970 till roughly the year 2000, China's per capita carbon dioxide emissions increased at a sharp rate than India. But notice the incredibly sharp growth after 2002. Uh, look at that sharp slope. Finally, look at the line at the top with the circles. That's the world's per capita emissions. And notice it continues to rise, even though its slope was pretty flat from the middle 70s till roughly the year 2000. And so for those like me who are very concerned about climate change, the challenge is, is that there's more people and per capita emissions are rising. Economists can do something here to help uh, incentivize polluters to change their game. But turning things around, in California, for those of you who are optimists or need some optimism, look at this pollution progress over time. So this is no longer greenhouse gas emissions. This is local air pollution, smog. I take every monitoring station in California from the year 1980 to the year 2001, and I graph the ozone smog reading. In each year, uh, there's multiple monitoring stations, that's each of these circles. And the higher up you are in parts per million, the dirtier it is. Notice the progress that during a time when California's population and per capita income both sharply increased. Really amazing improvements in ambient pollution. 
notice that every percentile of the distribution, the median, the mean, the 99th percentile, all sharply improved over time. This is an example. Uh, the Clean Air Act deserves a fair bit of credit here, that during a time of economic growth, we can solve key environmental urban challenges. So I can quickly state why, why I find environmental economics to be so exciting. The core research questions are hard. There's plenty of work left to be done. When we come up with a good answer, it's highly policy relevant, and the environment is a key part of our urban quality of life. Uh, my family moved to Los Angeles in part because of the great quality of life, and those cities that don't have good quality of life, don't have good environment, environmental quality, will suffer a, a brain drain. Look at Detroit. My own research agenda focuses on environmental and urban economics and quality of life in cities. My first book was called Green Cities, Urban Growth and the Environment, and I continue to focus on these issues, but more with a developing country uh, focus these days. And for those of you who are research nerds, you can take a look at a lot of the technical papers at my website, mek1966.googlepages.com. So this is just the first piece of what's going to be a large number of short videos posted to YouTube. What I'm trying to do with this set of videos is to convey to a larger audience outside of my UCLA students and friends the big ideas in modern environmental and urban economics in bite-sized little pieces. What's going to distinguish these videos from other videos like a Lady Gaga video or a Talking Heads or Kiss video is to focus on ideas and free market ideas based on my training long ago at the University of Chicago. I'm excited about this. I'm an environmentalist, but I'm a free market environmentalist, and there's not that many of us, And but I think we have a lot of interesting things to say.